Hello, my name is Levi Thomas with Green Tech. Today I wanted to tell you a little bit about our 50 amp and our 100 amp BMS that we make for the Generation 1 and Generation 2 Nissan LEAF modules. When you buy the BMS kit with the batteries, it comes with this all thread that connects seven modules together and the BMS that bolts directly onto the cells themselves. However, if you're going to be doing a whole bunch of batteries together and doing multiple BMSs connected into parallel, you can get a four foot or an eight foot all thread rod from Home Depot or any hardware store that runs all the way through all the cells. And then we also have these solid metal compression plates that you put on each end that bolt down and press all the cells together and keep them super solid. Lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate pouch cells like to be compressed and that increases the total lifespan of the battery. So while you can do it without a compression plate, it's highly recommended that you add this to it, especially if you're going to do a whole bunch of cells together in a long string. So here we have Green Tech's 50 amp continuous BMS made for the Nissan LEAF Generation 1 and 2 modules next to our new 100 amp prototype. So it doesn't have any other writing on it, but I just wanted to open them up and show you the differences of both of these BMSs. So if we take this lid off, which has the LCD screen, we can see the BMS and all the wiring and the fuses on both models. Both BMSs use the JBD BMS that is an extremely reliable brand and has one of the best apps, whether it's iPhone or Android. The JBD BMS is by far the best one out of any brand I've, I've seen yet. This is the 50 amp continuous, which has a 100 amp peak. This one's the 100 amp continuous, which does 200 amp peak. Both of them use two 10 gauge silicone wires coming out of the battery negative connection to the ne negative most contact on the negative most battery to the BMS. Then the BMS only disrupts the negative side. Both of these BMSs are a common port BMS, which means they charge and discharge out of the same negative wire. That is way more convenient than ones that have a charge wire and a discharge wire separate because you can use one plug and you can have power flowing in or out or you can have some charge going in while even more discharge is coming out. Say in a solar application, if the solar panel was putting in less than your inverter was pulling out, a common port BMS is way more convenient for that situation. Now this 50 amp BMS has a 100 amp peak, so we've got four 30 amp slow blow fuses soldered directly onto the PCB board. Now these are super easy to desolder and solder new ones on if you were to ever need to replace them. And they're also extremely cheap, less than a dollar. This 100 amp continuous has a 200 amp peak. Now this one has a 200 amp fuse and it doesn't solder on at all. It's just a bolt with a nut on the bottom. So you can just take it off and put a new one directly on it. So that's even easier to replace if you needed to. Both BMSs have MOSFETs inside of them that open the circuit to turn off the flow of current through the negative side. You only need to open circuit from one side, the negative side. You don't need to disrupt the positive side. So the positive wire on both of these come from the positive most connection on the battery through the fuse right to the Anderson plug. And on this 50 amp, it comes through the PCB board through these four fuses right here also to the Anderson plug. Both BMSs have temperature sensors built right into the BMS itself. There's a temperature sensor on the MOSFETs and there's a temperature sensor on the little processor inside of it. Also both of these BMSs have two 10,000 ohm thermistors on wires coming out of the bottom that you can glue to two different cells. That way if the batteries themselves 
are too cold, it will stop the charging. Or if the batteries get too hot, it can stop the discharging. Same thing with the temperature sensors inside the BMS. If anything gets too cold or too hot, it can turn off charge or discharge or both. Both the 50 amp and the 100 amp BMS have balanced sense wires. Now this has 15 wires here. So it has the B0, which is the negative most connection, independent from the negative most main silicone wires that handle all the current flow. Now that's beneficial. That way if you're under a high load where there's a little bit of a voltage dip, this balanced sense wire on the negative most connection is showing an accurate reading to the negative most connection independent from that. And then it has all the other 14 wires that go to the positive connection on every single cell all the way up to the red which is the positive most connection again independent of the large silicone wire for the same reason. Both of these go directly to a plug so when you take these two layers apart there's a male and a female plug that just disconnects so you can pop them apart easily and then on the bottom it goes through trace leads on the PCB board to every single connection that connects to every cell. Both the 50 amp and the 100 amp BMS can use generation 1 or generation 2 Nissan LEAF modules and both generation 1 and generation 2 Nissan LEAF modules are more than capable of handling 50 amp continuous or 100 amp peak or the 100 amp continuous with a 100 amp peak. So either Gen 1 or Gen 2 will work with either one. The main reason you would want to go with the larger 200 amp is if you needed that extremely high current flow, say for golf carts, and you only wanted to do like one or two modules for a small footprint instead of having four or eight modules connected into parallel. Both BMSs are common port, which mean they can charge and discharge through the same wire. So that's also really handy if you want to connect a two or three or four, or however many you want to do in parallel, you only need to connect the two wires to each BMS, black to black to black to black and red to red to red to red. Before you do that, you want them to be really close in voltage. I'd say within one volt. So go ahead and charge them up so they're equal. Balance all the cells before you connect them all into parallel so that there's not a large inrush of current between the different packs. Once they're connected all into parallel, you can charge and discharge them all together as if it was one big battery. So now that I've taken the 100 amp BMS off of the Nissan LEAF modules, I want to show you the underside of both of them. So on the 50 amp BMS, we have this copper and nickel coating right here on the PCB board itself. And that's the contact for the balance sense wires as well as carries the current between the series of each cell. And that only gets about 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than room temperature with 50 amp continuous load. However, once you're doing 100 amp continuous or 200 amps peak, you want to add this super thick copper bus bar. So that carries a ton of current in series. And then at the end, you have the super thick silicone wire. So once we did 100 amp continuous load for the entire capacity of the entire module itself, it never got more than 15 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than room temperature. That is fantastic because any temperature buildup on these transfers right into the cell and damage the, damages the electrolyte. So having this copper bus bar with the 100 amp continuous load is super important. So here I have two 50 amp BMSs. Each one is hooked up to seven batteries, which is a 14S module. And then they're both just combined together. And then the Anderson plugs here 
come out and hook them up into parallel. Connecting into parallel just increases capacity but remains the same voltage. So whether you're doing two, three, four, or 50 of them, you can connect all the red wires together and then all the black wires together and then have the main leads come out to your inverter or whatever device you're powering. And that just increases capacity but doesn't increase the voltage. One very important thing to note before you hook them up into parallel is they need to be really close in voltage or the percentage of state of charge to prevent an inrush of current from a higher voltage pack into a lower voltage pack. So right here on the BMS, each one says 93%, or you can log into the app and look at each one before you hook them up, red to red, black to black. That prevents the rush of current because if they're too out of whack, say more than one volt, or I'd say a few percent, that risks a lot of power coming over and the BMS should sense that and open circuit and turn off the connection, the charge and the discharge. But it also does have fuses that could protect it in case it was too much too fast, but that would pop the fuses and you'd have to go and replace them um, and things can be damaged. So always charge up the lower packs to be equal with the higher ones and then connect red to red, black to black and hook them all up into parallel. So like I said before, the 50 amp BMS can do about 2,600 watts or 2.6 kilowatts. So that's great for some small applications like this 2,200 watt inverter. But if you needed a lot of power in a small footprint, say in like a golf cart or something like that, that's where this 100 amp really shines. Or this 100 amp continuous BMS doing 5.2 kilowatts is great for a larger inverter, say like an 18,000 watt inverter. You could get by with only like four or five of these kits hooked up into parallel in a small footprint as well. However, say if you wanted to do like in your house, you know, 15 or 20 or 50 of these kits hooked up to an 18,000 watt large whole home inverter, then again, you could go back to a 50 amp BMS and that would be perfectly fine. You always wanna do a little bit more power on the BMS and the batteries than what you're doing because you don't wanna run them at exactly like their peak all the time because they're just gonna run too hot. Um, it's also gonna run out of power a lot quicker obviously because you'd have less total kilowatt hours in your total um, bank. So adding more batteries is always a safer bet than trying to push it to its limit. But if you need it to be in a small footprint, um, whether it's in like a RV camper or in a golf cart or something like that, this 100 amp with fewer cells is obviously a really good solution for that. Both the 50 amp and the 100 amp BMS use JBD brand BMS's here. So they both use the Xiaozang Electric app, which is a fantastic app for iPhone or Android. They have Bluetooth built right into them, so you can connect and you can see the total voltage, amperage, the differences. You can see a graph of the history of what's happened, discharge and charge. You can control the on and off of the charge or discharge. You can auto balance. This BMS can also show you every single cell's voltage. So here's one through 14, and the green is the highest, and the gray is the lowest. Now these are all 4.04 .04 to 4.05, so they're super equal. It also shows you the temperature of the MOSFETs inside the BMS and the processor inside the BMS and the temperatures of the wires that you would glue right onto the cells themselves. That way, if anything gets too hot or too cold, it will turn off the charge or the discharge to protect the cells or to protect the BMS. Thanks again for watching another one of our videos. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to see future videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or don't hesitate to reach out to us on our website. Thanks.